Hello, I'm back to bottom. My name is Beast. They, I think we've talked about this before. I don't think I know. I, in fact, it was for the first part in Misaki's route for White Album. I already talked about this. Uh, this is Arcade. Uh, the developers for this game, Top Jump Games, have messaged me about this and asked me if I could maybe talk about their game. Where that is coming up. I think it was like releasing somewhat, sometime... Was it September? I don't remember actually. Let me let me look. Let me, let me check that again real quick. No, it, it is set to come out at some point in November, but it's not set in stone yet, considering they are a small indie studio. And essentially, uh, I talked about it, but I decided, you know what, I'm gonna also, like, check out the demo at least a little bit. I'm not... I don't know if I'll play the entirety of the demo up until the cutoff point. But I will that put down in the description both a link to... Actually, you know what? I only need a link to the store, Steam store page since you can just grab the demo from there anyways. So yeah, uh, down in the description below, you'll find a link to the game. You can check out the demo yourself if I don't manage to play the entire thing today. Uh, I, I do view this as a very good opportunity because I do not... Like, I, I feel better than yesterday. But I still feel somewhat exhausted, so I do not want to have to deal with the White Album main character. And let's just say that I have trust that, considering the quality I'm seeing here, their main character is not going to be the same kind of idiot as Toya. Which, that's gonna be a hard fucking thing to do anyways. Yeah, like... I'll be entirely transparent, like, I have played some of these games before. Like, I've, I have played, like, indie titles, uh, that the, uh, indie titles for, like, review copies or demos here before. And I will be, will be entirely honest when I say that, like, when I was asked to play a Revenge Story before, you could very much see that it's a small v uh, indie studio, like, just by the quality of the art. Not here. Not not really here. Like, I... I would not... Like, if you show this to me, I would just think this could be, like, some Western VN. Instead of, like, a small indie VN or something. I mean, it is a Western VN, VN I assume. I'm not... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> None of the names that I saw uh, from the people that talked to me uh, from Top Jump Games looked like they had Japanese names or something. Yeah, anyways, let's just let's just hop into it. Like like I said, down in the description you'll find the link to the game and let's just get in there. But yeah, like overall I'm just still kinda exhausted because like uh, don't feel feel good to last night. Like fucking chest pain, heartburn mix never works well and when I finally fell asleep, like two hours later, I suddenly was woken up by my father because I got a call about an uh, an invitation to an interview and I was uh, so fucking out of it. I literally was like, oh, yeah, sure like Monday Monday one sure fuck uh, Okay, we'll see that then I'm panicked like wait. No, I don't know who you are But I can't just tell them that I just agreed to an interview interview without telling them who I am I'll just like try to like l lie through my teeth saying that I need like an email from them telling me that Hey, he has. He, we did see his uh, application, and we did invite him to a interview because I need to send this to like the the, the fucking uh, to like the, I, I need to send this to like the. I guess let, let's let's just say the state instead of me trying to figure out what else to call it. And so they sent me an email like, okay, on this day is the interview, and I'm just sitting over like, oh my god, thank god, I know, I know who I'm talking to now. <laughs> uh, 
They guard the mystery of birth and death, the laws of the universe, secrets of future and past. They are the true and immovable masters of this world. The sun came out of the thick grey clouds and filled the training room with a soft, pleasant light. A cool wind blew from a slightly open window. It was fresh and crisp, just what I needed. Silence. A pleasant, charming one. These moments become precious over time. Moments of silence, peace and harmony, they are the only time when you belong to yourself and can let your mind wander freely. It's a rare gift in times of war, especially when you're part of the army, or more so if you're in the elite unit. Let's zoom, I can click here to check the words. Elite unit, this text is lightly raised higher than it should be. This special unit consists of soldiers who have shown exceptional bravery in battle. Soldiers are ranked into three tiers based on merit, indicated by the stripes on their uniform. Elites undertake missions alone or in teams and can command lower ranked soldiers. They receive a generous salary and live in a castle in the capital rather than in barracks. Despite restrict regulations to prevent abuse of power and wealth, ordinary citizens still fear the elites due to past incidents of misconduct. The primary commandment for the elite is unwavering loyalty to their masters. That 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 never goes well when it's unwavering. Uh, training room. This large room is where soldiers practice combat techniques. Sparring sessions are common and can sometimes result in injuries. There's a creepy legend that when the Lykthos first appeared, they were used as living targets for strength practice. Eventually, they had to be replaced with dolls because the blood on the stone slabs couldn't be washed off, turning the hall into something resembling a torture chamber. Whether this legend is true remains unknown. I suppose we'll at some point also find out what the fuck the Lykthos are. War. It's the beginning of history for all races, which turned an entire city into ruins. <sighs> Since then, it has been called the Forgotten City. Peace and quiet, never heard hardly possible. Those who crave ruling will never reconcile. The history of this world is filled with battle, blood, and death. And yet, the last two years were quite calm. Unplaceable enemies were exhausted and finally decided to retreat, gather forces, and wait for a better moment to go into battle again. A simple strategy, which has been successfully used many times now. Compared to the nightmare that I got to witness, I would call the present state of things a favorable one. Some voices nearby distract me from the reflections. A man and a fairy had a lively conversation. They probably discussed a training plan for the day or shared the latest gossip in the castle. I do have read the name fairy on their fucking Twitter account already. Uh, humanoid creatures created by three resembling various animals and often appearing quite formidable. Despite their appearance, the fairy are a peace-loving race renowned for their craftsmanship. Yep, it, it, it's the furries. <laughs> they live longer than humans and possess far superior physical abilities, but do not flaunt their superiority. Fairy love festivals and fairs, and many are talented singers, musicians, poets, and artists. Though scientists are rare among them due to the patience and focus required. They have a strong rapport with humans, with ma mutual and standing between the two races. I stretched my neck. The break was over. I had to get back to training. I do not see any stripes that would indicate his rank, if he is indeed part of the elite. Actually, no, never mind. It's these stripes, I assume. Based on the fact that back there is a dude with three. So he's probably. So he's like a second ranked elite, it seems. Oh, hey, there's the furry. Wearing a start to affect me. I was losing grip on my sword. The pain in my legs was getting worse. The break let me get my breath back, but it didn't help me relieve. The, didn't help to relieve my muscle tension. Perhaps I should have. Shouldn't have trained so hard, but I didn't want to lose to a convenient opportunity. I didn't want such a convenient want to lose such a convenient opportunity to practice. Ah! Fucking <laughs> Meg, reading things out loud, your hobby still can't fucking do it properly. Ah! The mission turned out to be tougher than I had thought. My last mission turned out to be tougher than I had thought. No one knew that after the death of dragons, Bjorgs made it so far in the northwest. The speed of their expansion was alarming. Things don't change. Uh, Mjorgs? Tell me what Mjorgs are. Alright. 
But if things don't change, we'll have to set up more and more military posts and reinforce the ones that we have there. These creatures bear a burning hatred to people, which is not surprising at all, as I battled with them near Kratos Forest was one of the bloodiest for the last hundred years. I cast all the relevant thought out of my mind, focusing on my power target while thinking over my tactics and rushed forward to attack my imaginary enemy. I swing and hit from above while in a jump, already bad. Uh, back on my feet, I swift uh, shifted my weight to my left foot and crouched. You, you, you never go for jumping attacks in actual combat. You are just begging to be hit. Quick switch to the left hand behind the back and step to the belly with the hilt. Turn around while dodging a retaliation strike. We're switching the attack with the right hand from behind the back. Turn around and dodge again. Thrust forward with my right leg to trip the enemy. Back to square one. When we finished the combination. I put, got my breath back and looked at the training dummy. I could break to pieces in a matter of days. Could be wrong. It would be wrong to leave someone a broken dummy. In that case, I made two steps back, aiming forward with my sword and focusing on the target. So I shift my weight from one foot to the other and swung the sword to attack diagonally from above with a strike that would be strong enough to win a battle. The broken dummy felt a blow with a thud. Oh, that dark's got even dead beer. Doesn't look my two week training for ten hours a day it wasn't a waste of time. Put the practice sword and I put away the pra practice sword and took mine. Its weight seemed strange. Practicing with a heavier sword helped me to increase the attack speed while maintaining accuracy. Knew, however, that I would face a real test only in battle, not in the training room. Thinking that I came, uh, thinking that over, I came up to the washstand. The icy water was refreshing, helped me relieve the tension. I mean, Derg, you're frightened and amazed me at the same time. I assume Derg is going to be, yep, Hinkle Dinkle Durgan. <laughs> Sorry, had to. Derg was orphaned and joined the army at 15. By 19, and after completing a mission in the singing, si singing desert, he was enlisted in the elite unit, where he was, has since carried out all tasks alone. Ambidextrous and an excellent swordsman, Durg is laconic, calm, and calculating. He avoids forming attachments, preferred not to make friends, preferring not to make friends, though Mark is an exception to the rule. Durg has a long since stopped dreaming. His missions allow me not to think about what my life should be like. Oh, here he has three. They just mis they just they just not see correctly in the CG then. The fairy stood there leaning against the column with his arms crossed. He gave me a big smile, showing his fangs. I was always amazed to see a put it looking so friendly. I wiped my face with an old towel and turned around so I could talk without getting distracted. How long have you been there, Mark? Been here, Mark? I mean Saw your last attack, you know. More than happy than we are that we are on the same side, man. I wouldn't want to face someone like you in battle, that's for sure. Given your skill, I would say the same. The fairy gave a low whistle while looking at the training dummy turned into a piece of junk. Wow, you took it serious, man. Did you mean to chop the stein in half? <laughs> yeah, I should probably get out of here. Don't worry about it, we'll get some servants here to take it away now. Here, someone's coming this way. Hey, come here. Yeah, you have big ears, it's you calling. The hundreds of the castle servants approached, uh, approached us timidly. It was almost twice slower than Mark and looked both scared and excited. His eyes went to and fro and didn't seem to stay looking at an object more than just a moment. The Lycto bowed low with his tail tucked in hands. Uh, Lycto, a human creature created by six, resembling dogs in appearance and nature, often referred to as a race of slaves. Like to live over 300 years, serving multiple generations of masters, whose obedience is not tolerated, but they must seek punishment or forgiveness for any wrongdoing. Failing that, they will punish themselves. Despite their seemingly weak appearance, like to are very resilient, is often used for heavy labor and as test subjects. They are expensive to buy, yet demand high. Yet demand remains high. Expensive to buy, demand remains high. As in sixes returned from hibernation, like to have been getting sick more frequently, and their birth rates have declined, leading their decreasing numbers. This way is fairy, and this way Stein. A race of stone creatures created by two from special stones of the singing desert. 
The essence of life for Stein is a special grain placed inside the stone. Upon reaching a certain age, Steins can divide their grain, retaining a part for themselves and playing the rest to create new life. Steins do not have traditional families. Mentors raise them and train the young in military affairs. Steins live for about 80 years, returning when requiring neither water nor food, needing only a little sleep. You don't get sick or feel physical pain, but do regenerate. Do, but do not regenerate, age, and eventually die. Uh, but do not regenerate, age, and eventually die. They can grow up to three meters tall with great strength and endurance, but limited speed. As they age, they become slower but stronger. To defeat a stein, one must destroy its grain. Damaged steins can be restored by transplanting their grain into a new stone from the singing desert. Combining a stein's grain with water causes it to explode, and water absorption can be fatal. Stein comfortably uh, comfortable only in the land of the two. It can sense approaching rain and locate hidden water sources. For the military, Mark continued his father's jewelry business. He has a wife and son, and eight years ago, when one began the war for his lands, Mark joined the army to protect them and secure their future. His physical strength earned him a place in the elite unit. He utilized his knowledge of metals to craft swords during times of peace. Cheerful and sociable, Mark easily makes friends, even with reserved loners like Dirg. A masterful flute player, he goes on northern expeditions with Linda. Mark dreams of returning to his family. Hey, why is my friend so blue? So gloomy. Let me tell you something interesting. D did you call me master? Yeah, right you are. But what can I do for you, master? Uh, training's over. Clean up this mess. Uh, you, you don't have a name, do you? No, don't. So be bigger, make it quick. Sure, I'll do exactly as you've ordered, master. Yep, alrighty then. The light door rushed uh, the broken dummy trying to lift it up, make, taking into account its heaviness. One wrong push would lead to bank injury. But Zerv didn't care about that. He was ready to do anything just to carry out the order. Well, now, there you go. I almost forgotten why I was looking for you. You, I, you get so chatty sometimes. Chatty. Me. D d does he want to? Does he want to see me? Oh, right, you are. Uh, can you guess why as well? Predicting is not my thing. I'll go there and find out. Mark grinned. You are so serious sometimes that, it's, that it gets a bit scary. Honestly, why do you do that? I don't know. You fully make up for my seriousness with by your good humor. Well, that's on my way. So I'll walk with you. Something happened. Apparently not, actually. The castle's full of life, no matter when you step into its spacious corridors during the day or at night. This time we, this time we met mostly servants and soldiers on our way. Privates came to the castle only in the line of duty and went back to the armor quarters to sleep. Elite, elite soldiers were given apartments right in the castle. I thought it was quite convenient. We had more time to sleep. Besides, it's warm in the class, castle at night. One's castle, the castle. The oldest and largest structure in the kingdom predates the battle of, in the Forgotten City and remains in perfect condition, unlike other buildings. It is rumored that one spent about five months perfecting the castle's construction. From here, one governs his lands, and the throne room houses his communication equation with the elite squad soldiers. Six also spent most of the year in the castle, leaving only during active sowing and harvesting season to supervise the work on the lands. The castle's maintenance requires the labor of about a thousand like to We head to the south wing, and just like it usually happened when we were to walk together, I listened to and Mark was all talking. I very completely completed the last mission very fast. When I arrived at the military post, Privates had already dealt with the problem. Lucky you. I wish you were that lucky at least once. Oh, I miss my family so much. Ah, it all feels like too much. We get one task after another, one after another. We can't have a break. That is so unfair. We just, we have just reported our last mission. And now it's time to get on the road again. Going north. Yeah, right you are. Thought it feels like coming back home. They keep sending us there again and again. What task could they have in the north? There are no enemies and no military posts there. Uh, by the way, I almost forgot to tell you, uh, we got permission to bring in elites, uh, bring in an elite soldier who's not on a mission. Are you interested? Not enough to go that far to chill. Do you want to join us until you get a new test? You can still make it. No, I work alone. 
You may want to refit. Thank you, Vess, will you? Come on, man. Think again. Three elite soldiers will handle the task so easy. It's like having a walk in the park. Castle Park. Mark was cheerful, excited, enthusiastic as always. Looking at him, you could hardly believe that this joyful fairy had chosen the life of a soldier. More of an elite one. So what? Do you agree? No, nope, the answer's just the same. No, no, no. Three things never change in life. Time, numerals, and Dirk's decision to once take me. Alright, I'd better go now, or Linda will. I liked her carrying a pile of bed sheets, did not notice Mark and crashed into him. The result of that, some clean starch sheets were scattered all over the stone floor, from which which was far from being perfectly clean. Servant was scared to death, his ears and tail were tucked close, and was shaking, and his eyes widened so much that it seemed they could fall out of his head. But, but that, but that, but the bastard! The servant hardly managed to take a breath of air and continued his desperate attempts to squeeze out the words. It came out last like some unintelligible whine. Oh, what is it with you all today? First one of you dropped my dropped my furniture, then the tray with my dinner, and now you dropped these sheets. This is sorry. We need to repair a room fast. A room in this wing? Huh. Someone has joined the elite unit, right? Th yes, master. Now that is interesting. It's been a while since we've had new recruits. Who is it? I, I, I don't know much. Ah, you're no help at all. Sorry. Servant started shaking even stronger. His whining got louder, and it looked like he was going to drop to his knees before Mark. Please forgive me. Mm, I forgive you. What's all this performance for? I knew that Mark didn't enjoy pushing like those around. It was quite different to them to treat this race based on their own understanding of the world. That was the right thing to do if you didn't want any trouble. Tell me, how can I earn your forgiveness? Hmm, well, thought you were in a hurry. I'll probably give you if you tied up a room. I liked O'Neill jumped out of his skin. Oh, so you are so best. Well, I'll do it. I do know what my room is. But yes, you're... I do. All right, black ears, make sure you tidy up well. Glad to obtain forgiveness, the like the rushes to gather the sheets from the floor. He was afraid that the merciful mask would change his mind, so he kept bowing while walking backwards away into him from us till he disappeared around a corner. Yeah, a race of slaves indeed. Alrighty, I have to go now. So, so long, then. Mark waved to be cheerfully and turned the corner. This fairy can destroy half a dozen steins himself. He's as as I frighten them. Uh, sorry, mister, I don't know if you know this, but it appears your head is on fire. I left the high and heavy door wing behind and stepped into the hall. I remember when I first came here. When I first came there, I thought, why was the throne room so long and spacious? The answer came to me quite fast, and when I was walking along it, you can hardly discern the figure sitting on the throne, but you already feel this hard stare piercing you. The stare you can't evade, the stare which nature you can't comprehend. It strikes fear in your heart. The pressure is growing, and the air is getting heavier. Climbing a steep mountain in the storm feels much easier. Yes, this hall was built this way with the sole purpose to remind you who you were and who was the one that you'd face there. Oh, hold on. This is the entry. The last mission concluded before it even began. Upon arriving at the base for inspection, the soldiers had already identified and eliminated the traitor. This left me with several free days, which I devoted to training. As I wrapped up another session, Mark approached me. I noticed very well. Fine warrior and a feel for cheerful fellow. Mark informed me that the master was calling. A new mission awaited him. I actually have, like... Oh, no, that's the log... Uh, this. That was the main menu. You feel the need to lower the music a little bit. Oh, okay. It it, it opens up in the back. Okay. <laughs> uh, that one fucking terrible. <laughs> if I if I just lost that, I lost all the fucking stuff I already read. And what was even more important, to convince you that the difference between you two was so immense that it couldn't be measured that were overcome. I couldn't say that this time it didn't feel the crack of the throne room, but its effect was not so great. Perhaps that could be explained by the fact that I had accepted the way things are. It gave me a sense of freedom that no one would ever be able to take away from me. Step by step, I shortened the distance in the thro to the throne and soon could meet the eyes of the one who was sitting on it. Hey, uh, try looking stupider. 
Oh, whoa, 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 not that much. One. He was one... He was one of those who were called Arcas, masters of the world in old books. Those who were born with the wor world to rule it, as legends say. Some tells me that those legends are going to be made up by the end of the story. What's the next one? Oh, signs. I've translated from the first language now considered dead. Arche means the first principle or primary substance and the first are immortal beings. The rulers of the world, commonly known as numerals, uh, there are nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. No, it's actually nine. Uh, <laughs> according to legend, Arche were born with the world to govern it. They do not they do not need sleep, food, or water. They are immune to cold, heat, and physical pain. Arches possess special powers to write equations, enabling them to create objects and living beings and alter their nature. Through these equations, all the world's races were created initially. Uh, were created initially. All numerals lived in harmony. Together, they built the first city and formed the first council, where they divided the world amongst themselves. Each arche then pursued their own endeavors. Some created races, others developed lands or conducted scientific research. Councils were held regularly until one declared that there should be only one ruler, which greatly angered two. The conflict escalated into a battle that destroyed the first city and decimated their armies. Two months later, three convened a council to reconcile the parties and restore peace. However, it became clear that reconciliation was impossible. Numerals then settled their respective, uh, se then settled in their respective territories, abandoning the city, which became known as the Forgotten City. Both sides prepared for a new war, which ended with the disappearance of one. Upon one's miraculous return, his ambition to conquer the world intensified. But, yeah. Are we the bad guys? He he does look like a fucking evil dude. Like he does he he looks like he's part of the Empire in Star Wars, you know. One of the RK, creator of the human race, confident, decisive, and brutal, his primary passion is power. He waged war against the other RK, who refused to acknowledge him as their master. Though trapped and defeated by two, one revived two years later and swiftly reclaimed his lands. He uses bonding equations to control soldiers in the unique unit, keeping them in fear and obedience. These equations are displayed in the throne room, with the human race's equation kept in a special token on his chest. One dreams of unifying the world under his rule and building the strongest em empire in history. Only in strong hands will the world prosper. He also seems to be an Aegis based on the fucking thing on his chest. <laughs> You're right, Chronicles Joe. Stop. <laughs> Power and unwavering will were felt in his stare and movements. Domination was his only goal. He started wars one after another to achieve it and finally obtained recognition of practically all of the new ones. Some were glad to accept his new title of the Supreme Ruler. Some were defeated and some just joined the winner as they were indifferent to the struggles for dominance. It was no surprise that after one sudden disappearance ten years ago, it took him quite a little time to regain the throne. The Lord stared at me and remained silent. He was waiting for the report from his loyal soldier from the elite unit and made a bow, which was a traditional salutation to show my respect, appreciation, and loyalty. Bonding Equation each unit, so each unit soldier has a special contract activated when one creates a bonding equation for them. This equation serves to intimidate and control, giving one a complete understanding of each soldier's talents and abilities, allowing him to assign and reassign them as needed. These equations were introduced after the first elite soldier's, or soldier's portrayal, which cost one an important battle. Now, if an elite soldier tries to betray or terminate the contract, one can strip them of their primary talent and transfer it to another soldier, cancelling the trade responding equation. This ensures the elite unit retains valuable resources and the traitor is duly punished. The bonding equation self-destructs only upon the soldier's death, the sole way to end the contract without severe repercussions. For uh, starting to speak, I voluntarily and voluntarily take a, took a brief glance at the bonding equations floating in the air, properly derived and valid ones. Yeah, they are all over the place. Unless, unless anyone from the elite unit decided to betray one or to retire from the army. The payback for doing that would be the soldier's best quality. It would be taken away and given someone else. 
Thus the elite unit wouldn't lose resources and a renegade or deserter would most likely regret the decision taken. Only few managed to get back to normal life after their contract was cancelled. As for the others, there were some nasty rumors about them. I said about a soldier who had lost his brilliant memory and started to forget absolutely everything. Finally, a tragic accident ended his life. Some other soldier lost his string, which had been his point of pride. He couldn't stand for his loss and killed himself. If you ever decide to join the elite unit, you should do all you can to make sure your bonding equation stays here floating under the vast ceiling of the one throne, uh, once throne hall. I was still gathering my thoughts with a, when a peevish voice full of contempt came from someone standing on the side of the throne. Oh, you finally arrived. Just look at him. Bother to show up. How dare you make his magnificence await? Ah, uh, you worthless. Huh? You worthless, pathetic. Six, be quiet. Single glance to the right, and Six, who seemed so arrogant and smug just a moment ago, now stood still in fear and looked like one of the stone statues in a hall. Uh, yes, of course, as you command. Six, his desire to please one was so immense that he had given his lands to one's possession and created a race of slaves, like there was a gift. Two like those were sitting right there on the floor. They were all ears and eyes for any word or gesture of the numerals, ready to follow their orders at any moment. A girl was standing, was standing in front of the throne, her pink hair attracted the most attention, a rare color for a human. The girl was gazing at me, like she wanted to tell me something. I beg your pardon, my lord, I was training. No need to explain, don't waste my time, I have more important things to discuss. He turned his cold gaze upon the pink haired girl, making her flinch. She was standing straight as a string, each and every bit of her body was overstrained, she was hardly breathing. It didn't seem like she was physically trained or could demonstrate resilience under extreme conditions. However, she was dressed in the elite uniform. And that being the case, that was one thing I could assume. Are you a sorceress? What is a sorceress? She sorcerers. Uh, we just have an entry for six for some reason. Six, one of the arcade who created the like to race. He idolizes the one with fervent devotion. In an effort to win the one's favor, he ceded his lands and created the like to race as a gift. Once six aspired to achieve the same greatness as one, but over time his ambition morphed into blind worship. When one disappeared, six placed the like to into hibernation to prevent two from exploiting them. He dreams of earning one's recognition. When one rules the world, undoubtedly I will become his right hand. Some tells me you won't. We do not get... Oh, no, no, never mind. It is there. I'm just stupid. A magic is a gift bestowed by seven, and only humans can accept it. The first magicians be began to appear 20 years ago, following a special agreement between one and seven at the seven's feet near the Cretus Forest. Seven creates an, equ an equation referencing the date of birth, initiating... Initi Initiating the acceptance of magic, a painful transformation that lasts about a month and involves severe attacks. If a person succumbs to fear, the transformation fails, and the individual either becomes crippled or goes insane. Hence, becoming a magician, becoming a magician requires a brave and strong heart. After successfully accepting the gift, magicians study formulas for various purposes, including a defense, attack, healing, and entertainment. These formulas are derived from parts of failed numerals, equations, and have a temporary effect. Magicians can use their life for life energy to form pentagrams with special specific properties. If the formula is incorrect or the magician makes a mistake in its mental pr production, the magic fails. Successful spells cause the pentagram to disintegrate into visible sparks with the energy returning to the magician, except when used for healing, where it transfers completely to the recipient. Magicians are always welcome to capital. They simply need to express their desire, sign a contract, and join the elite unit. Let's talk about let's talk about Steins again. <laughs> Her eyes became round and surprised, and for a moment she couldn't get the words out. Huh? How do you know that, Doug? You surprised me. Does she know me? I remember her. The girl's face changed. She came straight up to me, holding out her hand with enthusiasm. My name's Agatha, and I'm very excited to meet you. I knew if I became a source, become sorcerer, I'll meet you. I don't know why I decided to speak her like that. I ignored her outstretched hand. Gather looked at her hand at me, totally confused. Her mystic excitement vanished and turned to bewilderment. So did you become a sorceress to meet me? Yeah, that's right! <sighs> well, let's show what they say. Fools grow without waiter or watering. But what? I said it's foolish. Really foolish. But what are you. What? Do you. 
I don't even know what it costs me. I do. That's why I've said so. Becoming a sorcerer is not a clever thing to do. Ah, I will. Bright pink sparkles covered girl's hands. It would be unwise to waste your power on me. You uncouth pumpkin! Well, actually, I was born and grew up in the capital. That's it! Magic glow bright. The magic glow got brighter. Sparkles gathered in pentagrams. One breathed sigh of weariness, but then into the earth. Like those flinched and six grinded his teeth in anger. I say it's unwise. Fingers slipped to the soldier by reflex and legs changed their position to a steadier pose. I was ready to repel an attack, but Gatha didn't move and just glared at me. But she managed to control herself. She managed to be caught up in a storm of emotions and about to unleash them. Still, I didn't feel any real danger. That's enough. Gatha flinched, having remembered where she was, and a magic glow disappeared. She turned back to the throne and stood at attention. I have no respect at all. This is the throne room of his magnificence, not a training room. And the stand and stood that Gatha began her service not long ago. It was evident in everything starting from her inability to assess the situation through their imprudent actions influenced by her to through to the imprudent actions influenced by her emotions. One got up from his throne and headed to us. Six flinched and hurried after him. Your magnificence, I must be taught respect. I can handle it. Just give me an order, and we'll let you down. You unworthy ingrates! Uh, sorry, my lips are sealed. Sealed. Well then, you've got acquainted, so let's get to the point. Dirk, Effiot's caused more trouble now. I haven't been active over the last few days, though, but we need to deal with them once and for all. Oh, no, Effiot's... Agatha. <laughs> Agatha grew up in a large family and taught herself both magic and geography. Her life took a tragic turn when her, she was 11. Her father died, and during the war, she lost her siblings. By 19, her mother had also passed away, leaving Agatha completely alone. Struggling to manage the family business, she sold it and found work as a cook and tavern. It was there she learned from a former elite member that magicians were always dem in demand by the one... Inspired, Agatha decided to become a magician and join the elite unit. Initially, she was thrilled to reunite with Dirk, who had once saved her during the war. However, she soon discovered that the real Dirk was very different from the hero she had imagined. Agatha dreams of seeing dragons. Books are the best thing you could ever come up with. Isn't it wonderful to turn the pages, plunging into a world of exciting stories and adventures? One. Six. I think they skipped two through five. Bad jokes. Uh, anyways, Effiots. Eff unknown monsters that appeared suddenly, attacking military bases and peaceful settlements. Effiots are impervious to physical attacks, rendering conventional weapons useless. While they can be injured by magic, they regenerate at an incredible rate, making them in seemingly indestructible. These aggressive creatures spit acid from their mouths, and can, which can corrode even metal. Their origins and lifestyle remains a secret. Several teams have already been sent on such missions. I decided to send you as well. Your task is to find a way to fight the Effiants. It's Two's doing, I'm sure. He's the one to blame. She's putting spikes in our wheels. She's not giving up. You better stay quiet in her sandbox, but no. She better stay quiet in her sandbox, but now. We get, need to gather the troops and give her a good beating to make her forget about crossing our lord. That's what we should do and what she should do now. How does this man, like, endure this fucker constantly talking next to him? He's on the drink. Ah. Starting to feel a wee bit of hunger. Now I don't remember giving you a right to command my army. One through six, a dark look. I apologize. At this moment, I thought that six was the only one who could have created the like to raise. He himself had an appearance of a pretty big eared slave. Petty big eared slave. Has everyone found where they dwell? No, they're obviously, uh, obviously undemanding the choice of climate, I say. Agatha will go with you as your partner. What? Me? Go with him? One chose to ignore her angry remark. There is no point in having another warrior as your partner. A sorceress may prove useful, on the other hand. Any objections? None. 
and only a madman would try objecting one's will in this situation. We set up tomorrow morning. How could this happen to me? How could this happen to me? Gatha threw an angry glance at me. Yes, there is a thing I'd like to clarify. What is it? If someone dies in our team, the other one will not be held responsible for that. Is that correct? What? Correct. Any other questions? And that is all I needed to know. Gatha stepped forward. W wait! Her voice shook. She cleared her throat. Yes? Is that why I could switch places with someone? There isn't. But... One came closer to her, the difference in their stature was immense. It was more than just height. The ruler looked at her as if she was a lowly and insignificant creature too small for him to acknowledge her presence. You have just entered my service, yet you already demonstrate your discontent. And I ask what you expected when you signed up? But, hey, she glanced at me. Do you think I obtained all this power by babysitting my soldiers? Uh, what should you? Disobedient, disrespectful, they can't serve their master. If I were in charge, I would teach them. As the distance between Agatha and one short, and she gulped. I, I don't. She fell silent, took a step back, and turned pale. You shall be going, my lord, time is of the essence. The task is given. As the soldiers of one, we can object to his decisions. As soon as Agatha recognizes the simple rule, the easier her life will become. Get it done. We bowed and left the throne room. You can wait for me at the bull. I thought it was just gonna be her screaming at him for a second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you could wait for me at the board of the One's Kingdom. Let's say in Lenar. She blinked several times before responding. Why Lenar? It's quiet now. What? What are you talking about? I'll come back for you after I complete the mission. Do you want me to hide and wait while you're out there completing the task? Yes. Not on your life, you hear me? You're even more impervious than I thought. I'm going with you. You'll see what that I know my way around, too. I'm not just a sorceress, I'm great at route planning, too. Well, I tried. <sighs> Don't know where to send yourself. <laughs> I don't need advice from you. She sneered, letting me know that our conversation was over. We'll meet here at dawn tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm not sure, but that looked like a goodbye. Who does he think he is? She kept thinking back to the moment when Dirk shrugged, cast me an indifferent look, and walked away. Why did everything end up like this? Why? This question span around and around in my head. With my lip. It's not what I pictured at all. Not at all. Couldn't just settle down. I just couldn't settle down. I couldn't wrap my head around Dirk being so rude to me. Oh my god, so rude. Something keeps popping up, and I'm like, wait, did something get added without my knowledge? Has anyone taught him any man manners? Born and raised in the capital? Ha, <laughs> big deal. Dropped on bed, exhausted. Not like I can do anything now. The deal with one is sealed. Maybe I could back out of it. But then, how would I pay? I knew an elite soldier who had lost his health. His body became soft and fragile. Once physically strong, that fairy didn't last even a month without the deal. Shook my head. Come on, Agatha. Get yourself together. You're not gonna lose your heart, right? No way. I've got a task, and I will handle it. I'll have to team up with him. Is it really the same person? You could wait for me at the board of One's Kingdom. Let's say Lenar. Why did Dirk mention my hometown? It does look like he remembers me. So it's Quinston's, right? We breathed in and out. One, two, three. I was counting all the arcs, like my father used to when he was gathering his thoughts. I settled down. The tension that grew throughout the day was gone. Feeling a bit stronger, I got up and took a look around the room. Click on items to examine them. Not a bad liberty for a soldier's room. Library for a soldier's room. Maybe I should take a better look at it sometime. But certainly not today. We also got money. More money. One's banner. Another reminder of where you are. I could light a candle or two at night, then read a book, sinking deep into a wonderful story. 
A rather convenient and spacious bedside table. Made out of durable wood, I guess. Saw it turn into a magnifying glass for a second, but where? I know I'm missing something. It's somewhere. I'm around here, I think. A tip for the full release: make the game like actually just back out of this automatically if you've w found everything, so you don't just sit here looking. For ages. <laughs> ah! Why specifically down there instead of up there? Looks like a snow. Looks like soon it will snow again. That should be all then unless they actually already have the function I mentioned in there and I'm just stupid and blind and fucking retarded and should fucking go to bed and, s <laughs> and fucking pity myself <laughs> uh, okay that's pretty cold here bit dull though I can't expect much from Salty Boom my bundle was there near the bed fit everything I took from home and grab the bundle. A couple of my favorite books. They usually fit into a shelf. Some personal stuff I put in the drawer by the window. There was just pens left. Lock had been fixed long ago. The beads could break at any moment. It had to be fixed long ago. The beads could break at any moment. It would be nice to replace them. Oh, uh, yeah. The fairy walked into the room. One of the tallest and toughest I'd ever, ever, ever seen in my life. Despite the intimidating look, he was beaming with friendliness and some sort of special charm as if a good old friend paid me a visit and made to tell a most captivating story. HA! <laughs> Looked like that. Looks like I was around showing the right door. Alrighty. Uh, this. This game by to say hi. Whoa, what the? Fairy knows the pen in my hands. What an interesting thingy. M may I take a look? Yes, yeah, please. Uh, it's pretty good. Whose work is this? M my brother's made it. Any chance to learn from Master Shuffman? How do you guess that? Master Shuffman, that famous. Yes, that's right. Really, Master Shuffman was my father. Explains why his technique seems familiar. Well, just look at that. What a small world. Small world indeed. But they also added a personal touch to it. They have talent. Now, by the way, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name's Mark. Agatha. Agatha. I'm, I'm, one, of the, I'm one of the elite four. <laughs> the fairy's face shone with a charming smile. As charming as it could be if you were born looking like a wild cat with a predator's grin. Glad, we, uh, glad we've met. There haven't been any elites in a while. Uh, by the way, have you been assigned yet? Uh, who do you work with? With Dirg. No way! This can't be true! I wish it turned out to be a bad dream. That tall dude who can barely even squeeze an emotion. Ever squeeze an emotion. Yep. The one having that blank, a faint stare as if he was tired of living. Yep. The stare that seems to say, just leave me alone, I'm gonna go lie down. I just nodded to that. He thinks a lot and speaks little. Uh, and when he speaks, you begin, you begin to think he could, should have kept silent. I don't get it. Is it really so hard to believe that it could have been assigned to his partner? To be his partner? How? Mark's ammo eyes were glowing with curiosity. How did you make it happen? He always works alone. I tried to convince him to join me and my partner so many times, but to no avail. Well, I... He slapped his forehead. I got it. It's the feminine charm. The what? <laughs> Why, of course. Oh, uh, well, I mean, if only I'd known that before, I would have asked Glinda to help me. Uh, Mark, I was signed by, uh, by the order of one. Hmm. By the order of... Uh, Mark circled around me, looking at me from every angle. That stare made me feel a bit uneasy. Why is he staring like that? If you don't mind me asking, what is your role in a fight? Well, I'm a sorceress. For a second, Mark's eyes filled with saddest compassion, maybe even pity. Oh, a delicate lady like you becomes a sorceress. 
I was a bit confused by his reaction. People used to respond to this phrase in a different way. They were either completely in interested or asking to help them with their health. Becoming a sorcerer is not a clever thing to do. That choice seems to cause a strange reaction in everyone here. There was a silence for a moment, then Mark smiled at me as if nothing had happened and changed the topic in the subtlest possible way. Oh, by the way, Agatha, where could I find your brothers? I'd absolutely love to chat with them. They're dead. Oh! I am so sorry. After one's return, my brothers were drafted into the army. They died on the battlefield. Mark turned his gaze on the dependent. This lock needs, needs fixing and some parts should be replaced. I could do that if you'd like. He took my hand and carefully put the pendant in it. I made it for you, right? Actually, made it so you could wear it. The family knows a lot about metals, alloys, and jewelry. Before I started forging swords, I used to be a jeweler, jeweler just like my father. You should wear it. And if anything happens, I'll fix it. Look good on you. Yeah, it's very pretty. You should wear it. Ted and Nick, my older brothers. This little pendant was the only thing I had to remind me of them. Well, how about a welcome dinner? Wait. I have an idea. And you can't say no. What was the point of asking, then? Listen, Mark. I'll go and find Linda. You absolutely must meet her. Uh, but... I'll be back in no time. <sighs> Great. He didn't even let me say a word. He said everything himself. After my brother's funeral, I wasn't sure I should wear the pendant. The last couple of years, I did my best to keep their gift safe. Breaking it accidentally or worse, losing it. That's what I feared the most. Eventually, I managed to convince myself that keeping it in a drawer was the right thing. It was the only... That was the only way for me to make sure it would stay intact. At the end of the day, it's impossible to go against time. So the pendant lost its luster. Suddenly, I decided to change my mind. Mark's words about my brothers wanting, to, wanting me to wear it got to me. After all, things are made to be used. I smiled at my thoughts. As if it should bring joy. It shouldn't, be just, it shouldn't be just collecting dust on a shelf. I'll fix it as soon as I can and start wearing it again. I carefully wrap the pendant cloth and hide the precious gift in my bag. I'll keep it on me for now. Don't want to part with it. Come then, the door opened slowly and a shivering voice came from behind it. Oh, we, where? We were told to bring some food and drinks here. Oh, I see. While well, you put it here. Like those quickly got to work. Their eagerness and devotion to every task daunted me. It seems there was no nothing more to their lives than serving and fulfilling tasks. And the more tasks they could complete, the happier they got. Do you wish anything else? Well, uh, we'll do anything. Yes, anything. If you do something wrong, you will punish us. L no, no need for that. I'm not going to punish anyone. Are they surprised or scared? Uh, maybe just tell me your names. Uh, we don't have names, madam. Uh, then maybe I should give you names? L no, that's not allowed, madam! We can only be named by the master. Yes, yes, only by his magnificence one and no other. O other way. Is that unfair? Do we want to change that? Like those looked at each other terrified. Not at all, not thought like that. We are a precious gift. We are a precious gift from Six to his magnificence. Can't break the rules. Can't break them. Can't ever break them in no case. But to this day, I haven't had a chance to talk to a like, though. One could afford servants like that in the Nar. No one could afford servants like that in the Nar. So the first time I saw a like, though, was during one of our adventures with my brothers. Lactos were very loyal to their masters. I knew that. I uh, didn't expect to see that frightening fanaticism. And at the moment, I began to realize that the, at that moment, I began to realize that the things I'd heard about them were all true, no exaggeration. Looking at the servants, I felt the spear and fear at the same time. Madam, please, don't, don't speak of such hor horrible things to uh, no more. But how? For them, even the thought about their rights or freedoms, a betrayal to six. Betrayal of six. And those who try to instill such thoughts into their heads are the embodiment of free evil. I turned around, Mark and a female fairy were standing at the door. This must be Linda. Linda's family was tragically killed by a deserter during the unrest in her hometown. Seeking justice and the means to find the killer, she joined the elite unit. Once soft and sociable, the tragedy turned her harsh and cold. Linda speaks her mind bluntly and concerned with those opinions. She has a beautiful singing voice, though few have heard it. Her close friends are few, with Mark being a constant partner. Linda dreams of avenging her family's death. The world cannot be changed, but we have no other choice. But... At the moment, my own voice seemed pathetic and hesitant to me. This, uh, this order of things has existed for a thousand years. Do you want to change that with some inspiring speech? But why should I accept this injustice? The fairy shrugged her shoulders and smiled ironically. Try changing yourself first and see how foolish it is to try changing the wor entire world. 
Mark clapped his hands to mark the end of the awkward conversation and shifting the attention to himself. Hey, floppy ears, you still here? Get out of here, quick, shoo shoo. Like those ran out of the room. Well, like Agatha, let me introduce you to Linda, my partner. Congratulations on joining the elites. If you ever need anything, let me know. I'm the seventh room to the right from here. I'll keep that in mind. Not so sure I'll be asking her for a voice. So you're a sorceress, right? Right. I was born a human, I've become a sorceress for sure. I could hear a tone of regret in her voice and a strong desire for something unachievable. Meanwhile, Mark fills three glasses with dark cherry colored drink. Tomorrow, we're going on a mission, so no wine today. We'll drink fruit punch instead. Like sleep wouldn't help us either. Ah, come on, we're not gonna stay up late. He gave me a glass. But I guess you're all free tomorrow, aren't you? No, I have a mission too. Oh, and here's the friendship again, Agatha. I keep all accidentally call her, call, calling her Agatha or something. The Agarthians, oh no. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I think I can, I, like fucking dirt is just going down the hall and it's just like, isn't this the new recruits room? Why is there dubstep coming out of it? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Hold on. Who, who the fuck suddenly tagged me somewhere? Well, I'm gonna have to look at this later. All I know is that, uh... Kira has tagged me with a Twitter... Vi Twitter post videos saying behavior befitting me. So that's gonna be interesting to see what the fuck that's about. Actually, you know what? Hold on. I'm gonna fucking mute desktop audio real quick and just watch it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I agree with that. Apparently, in the new Monster Hunter game, you can charge it, a uh, charged hammer to the max, and then you just like start swinging around, and you can move while you do that, and just like fucking punch something. Which absolutely, I would, as, as someone that likes to play hammer, I absolutely would do that. Though I have recently switched to uh, switch axe, somewhat to a degree at least. Anyways, remember to unmute the desktop audio. Always important. The toast was brief, and the drink tasted better. But emptying our glass after emptying our glasses, we refilled them and got us as comfortable as the humbly furnished soldier room allowed. Mark leaned on the bookshelf, Linda climbed this windowsill, and I sat on the bedside table, just like I used to in my childhood. About an hour ago, the room seemed pretty spacious to me, but with two fairies inside it. Uh, it felt this it sh shrunk. Ah. And what is your task? We need to figure out how to deal with effiates. Whoa, quite a task that one, ain't that right, Linda? Tough one, especially for a newcomer. Still, Derg will be there with her. Derg works really well alone, but when he's li but what's he like in a team? Only the numerals know. But what he's like in a team, only the numerals know. It wasn't the right to change the usual order of things. It would have been better for him to go without a partner than with, the, with, than with one. I didn't expect I could agree with Linda on anything. Linda seemed arrogant and stubborn to me at first, but now I could see that she understood people pretty well and spoke her mind despite the situation. Couldn't help but respect that. Yeah, that's quite a hard task right from the start. I agree, I won't have it easy. You should really not think that I'm absolutely helpless. What do you know about Effiates? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, he had some nightmarish creatures. A couple of weeks ago, they attacked several of our military posts in the south and in the west at my time. Looks like the army needs to develop a more effective tactic against them. The army actually needs to find out how to kill those things at all. What do you mean? Mark and Linda exchanged glances. I think she'd say straight out she'll need this information. Uh, I don't get it. Didn't Dirk tell her anything? Yeah, it's a bit odd. Could have slipped his mind, perhaps. That's unlike him, forgetting to mention something like this. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about it then. Could have had his reasons. Maybe, but it doesn't seem fair to Agatha. Oh yeah, they're acting like I'm not even here. A few moments ago, for a few long moments, they just stared at each other, exchanging thoughts without saying a single word, then nodded to each other. Well, to this day, no one has managed to kill a single F yet. So far, it was only possible to keep them at bay. What? Not a single one? 
All weapons are useless against them. Magic does seem to damage them, but these beasts regenerate too quickly. On top of that, they attack by spitting acid, which easily dissolves both flesh and metal. I've never heard anything about that. And you shouldn't have. This information is reserved to the elites. And none of that ever got out. How is that possible? I can't afford any unrest. So far as so as far as uh, so far as you can see, we've managed to keep the situation in control. How is this right? Everyone is being kept in the dark about this danger. Are you suggesting making? Uh, do you suggest making this information open to the public? Will you take care of the panic among the population? Would you want everyone to know the stories about dozens of crippled soldiers and how they lost their limbs to the acids? Uh, hum. At that point, Linda didn't seem that nice of a company to me anymore. Sorry, Agatha. I don't want to sound dramatic, but the situation is far from encouraging. You should know that. Well, now, uh, I see why it's so important to stop them. I tensed my fists to hide the anxiety I felt. Yet again, I was regretting my decision to join the elites. All this just to meet one person. I finally understood how unreasonable my actions had been. But now I wanted to help others even more than ever before. The desire to help outweighed by the anxiety. I'll do my best to complete this mission. I'll show this moody soldier with a sour face what I'm capable of. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what's that about? I felt the anger growing inside me again. He just offered me to back out to sit quietly and wait until he gets it all done by himself. Who does he think he is? Oops, that just slipped out. He offered you to wait. Yep. You don't know Dirk very well. He didn't mean to offend you. Yet everything he did was offending me. Okay, okay. You'll get to know each other better. Maybe you'll get along. You'll get to know each other better. Maybe you'll get along. Steins will start melting in the sun before that happens. <laughs> I would like to see that. Linda smirked. And what is your task? Mark and Linda exchanged glances again. Sorry, Agatha, but it's secret. What? That's not really fair. I told you mine. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Buck scratched the back of his head. You rejoin us, we'll let you in on the de details. The elite winked at me. Yes, in that case, we'll have to. A matter of life and death. We didn't have to bring up death. So, it's not going quite as cheery as I was hoping. Let's fix this. He took an oddly shaped flute out of his belt pouch. I haven't played in a while, my apologies. I mess up a bit. The melody coming out of the flute was turning into a calm, peaceful, charming music. It felt like the time itself had stopped and all the anxiety started to fade. I'm not singing. I'm not singing. Huh. Well, it's got a beautiful voice. Well, that's fair. Is at their best. The crafty and fun-loving folk that put on the elite uniform to serve one, but they still remained of their own kind. Both elites practically have transformed, and I couldn't help but wonder what had happened to these friendly fairies to make them join the army instead of doing what seemed to be their natural calling. What made Mark quit, quit his jewelry craft and start forging swords? Swords, which are made for one single purpose, to kill. Each of us has our own reasons to be here. Again, I'm not singing. You cannot make me. Upon my arrival at the kingdom to serve one, I couldn't have anticipated the world with events that waited me on my first day. I hadn't even settled in my room when one summoned me, derived from my connection e equation, and immediately assigned me to my first mission partner with Dirk. The audacity of him to call me foolish for becoming a mag magician. He presumed to understand my life and judge my choices. Judge my choices. I resolved to prove him wrong. I mean, to be fair, what you said is essentially you fucking joined the elites to meet him. You joined an elite army squadron where essentially almost all your freedom is taken from you to say hi to a guy. Uh, hold on. Apparently another page was added that I missed. Uh, if in one throne room, I encountered Agatha, an emotional magician assigned as my partner. Though she seemed to recognize me, I had no recollection of her. Her mission involved the Effiates, which was a dangerous task for a novice like Agatha. However, her determination was a ter termination was unwavering. I was worried that her lack of experience might cause some trouble. Problems, I mean. Again, I'm not singing. Again, I'm not singing. One can't defeat the rules of the world. The fight is futile, for they are above, for they are above death. The power is beyond our reach. Remember this, and descendants. Huh? <gasps> WAKE UP! I knew she'd oversleep. She's still in bed. Why? Why? 
Actually, you know what? Using this one as a thumbnail is gonna be funnier. So. <laughs> How did you get here? I walked in through the door. Oh, you walked in through the door, you say. The girl's eyes widened. Her sleepiness disappeared all at once. Ah! I must assume you're fully awake now. Y y y y y you... You... What are you doing in my room? I came to wake you up. Get out of here! Why would I? Because it's a girl's room. You just showed up uninvited. We have a mission. I know that, but it's not a reason to burst into my room. Grabbed the uniform carelessly, left it on the bedside table, and tossed it at her. Wait, no breakfast? Reasonably? Considering his personality? Or, like, overall the fucking state of the, of the faction? No. But a soldier on an empty stomach is bad. Also, I myself am hungry, so, you know... <laughs> I, I, I sympathize. <sighs> I'll tell someone to bring you breakfast. There were dozens of like those hurrying along the corridor, stumbling and bumping at the walls at each other. It wasn't hard to catch one of them to give an order. Well, it never is. It wasn't hard to catch one of them to give an order. Well, it never is. Stop. <gasps> yes, Master, what can I do for you? Breakfast, bring it here. Here, to, to this room. Why is he so nervous? Is anything wrong? No, of course not. I'm on it, Master. Hey, Derg, you're still in the castle. That doesn't seem like you. I can say the, thing, the same thing about you. I messed up with the provisions again. Bark is there sorting it out. I guess they got human-sized rations. wonder why you didn't tell Agatha about Effiots. Looks like you and Mark took care of it. That doesn't answer my question. I'm just used to working alone. I feel like that's not the only reason. Well, whatever. Can you believe it, Linder? They gave us human rations again! Unbelievable! Will those white hat guys ever remember that we have different stomach capacities? Oh, hi, Dirk. Uh, you're still here? That's new. That's uh, as if it's my fault. We need to go. Yep, we should be going. Good luck. Safe journey to you. You two return with no one lost. As Mark and Linda disappeared behind a corner, the light though came back, panting heavily. I'll take it from here. I took the tray from them. Oh, really? Do you need anything else, Master? No, that's all. You're so kind, Master. If you'll excuse me, I'll go now. Is he glad that there were no more tasks for him? Doesn't look like a like, like though. Without knocking, again. We should have changed by now. The elites don't have time for the court etiquette. Agatha sighed and rolled her eyes. Put the tray on the table. Breakfast. Thanks. Not at all. You didn't tell me anything about the effiants. But you already know from Mark and Linda. <laughs> yeah, but you're my partner and you should have told me. I wouldn't have to if you had agreed to wait in Lenar. If you have a choice, it's best to take up every opportunity to live a peaceful life instead of throwing yourself into the fire pit. Eat and we are moving out. Uh huh. You're still in the castle. You're out. Th you're out of the throne room. Uh. The girl went red, went then pale and red again. Her face twisted in a swirl of emotion from surprise to absolute terror. Did I not make myself clear yesterday? He, sta he stared at us with a deadly expression, making our blood run cold. It's an odd mission. Pre preparation took more time than we estimated. It's our loss. You petty humans! Are you really one's race? You sully the good name of your curator. You're a mistake in the equation. Uh, I'm assuming that's, that is something akin to... you. Uh, Goodbye, God. Uh, your fucking parents, uh, your ancestors are looking down at you in shame. Something. Uh, a mistake in the equation. Numerals can make mistakes when composing equations, which are categorized as critical or permissible. A critical mistake causes the equation to dissipate without effect. Permissible mistakes allow the equation to function, but resulting creation may differ from the intended outcome, potentially leading to unexpected and catastrophic consequences. Anyways, let's see what I read about the signs again. <laughs> A mistake in the equation. You think that I made a mistake? My lord, I didn't. I apologize for the magnificence. Six bowed and stepped back. Your pay for this month will be cut threefold. You had it easy. We had it easy. But Agatha sealed her lips, shutting, cutting herself off. One came closer and looked her in the eye. Agatha became even paler. You can even read. You can read every thought on her face. 
it's bad for the soldier not to be able to keep her emotions in check. Time need uh, time seems to ch stop. One stare at the girls of waiting. Get it done. Agatha let out a sigh of relief. We will. We'll do our best. One turned to me. I count on that. I bowed and quickly walked away. Agatha bowed as well and caught up to me. So, where's your morning spirit? If it's because of me, our pay was cut. Can't argue with that. If you didn't know the sleeve, this would have happened. The girl went silent, looking devastated. It seems she took everything too much to heart. Would have been unwise to go on a long journey with an empty stomach. She gave me a surprised look. Yes, you're right. Looks like a mood has changed a bit. Quick my pace. But wait for me, Dirk! Yo, my brother in Christ. Let's press the button to hide it. Yeah. Yo, my brother in Christ. Why are you why are you using your hands? You had a hammer. Actually, how does that work with the statue? Is it like attached to like the back thing here, or is it like attached onto the dragon? How does that work? Anyways. Hundreds of years ago, one like many archers derived an equation to change the nature of the lands we took a liking to. Pure white snow, cool winds, thick cumulus clouds, occasional sun, and the year filled with freshness and the light scent of upcoming spring. The capital gorgeous as an ice sculpture, fascinates and mesmerizes, but if you touch it, the cold will burn your skin. I have mixed feelings about the capital, like melancholy, sorrow, and despair, but along with that, tranquility. The largest and most populous city in the One's Kingdom is governed by one himself. The capital's origins trace back to the construction of the castle about 1600 years ago. Human settlements gradually emerged and expanded around the castle, eventually merging into a single city. With the advent of Lycdor, a large scale construction began rapidly growing the city to its current size. Soon after, Fairy and Danath also started to settle there. Eight years ago, upon his return, one's first action was to reclaim the capital and several surrounding cities in very bloody battles that claimed many lives. Click on items to examine them. Man. That's a massive statue drawing much attention. Strikes fear and fascination. Fascinates at the same time. The label under it reads, Nine's race cannot be defeated. Only killed. Even one acknowledged the strength and power of the fire breathers. Dragons, an extinct race. Now we can only see them in pictures and statues. Wow, what a statue. I've heard, of course, but I never thought it looked so ominous. Mommy, let's get closer. Let's see closer. Can we, can we? You shouldn't, honey. Uh, but why? Let's get closer, please. We don't have time for this, honey. Next time. Uh, Lupi Lupinda, what is this? Don't you see? It's a shambling mask. That much? Who's it for? Here we go again. Our parents have their anniversary next week. I've already sent our invitations out. Invitations, but why are you doing this? They don't even know what you plan. Do they even know what you're planning? Well, who else if not me? But the list. Are you trying to feed the entire population of the capital? Brother, stop whining. Just buy everything on the list. You're in one service. I'm a private! Do you think they're pouring gold over me? Now the elites, that's a different story. They, um, because he greeted us with a nod and pulled his sister aside. Like those on a pressed race, which are more than satisfied with its place. Most Lycdos don't even have names or their own homes. Arla Booby. That's just a message I got. Alright, uh, someone that I have something planned did just finish something. So, hold on, let me just...
belongings or slave education every year. Born into slavery, they live about 300 years in their owners' families who treat them worse than their cattle. Some say the least lucky are the ones owned by healers, since lactophysiology is pretty close to human. They are expendable supplies like wood and or brick used in construction. Lactos themselves find this to be the right and the only possible order of things. Being a slave is the point of their existence. And without the, that race, we wouldn't even have enough food. It's no secret that most of the crop is grown on their lands. Who depends upon whom? That's the question. The street merchant's cart passes by, rumbling on the stone pavement. Hey, do you want some hot pies? No, thanks. Oh, hey, they have, like, also fucking cloaked sprites. Too bad. You sure you don't want to get a couple while they're out. Telling you we don't want them. Oh, come on, buy something. Nah, we're not hungry. Let's go go on forever. I turned around and came up on the merchant. We are in a hurry. He finally noticed our uniform. You leave you in it. Oh, my apologies. I won't hold you up any longer. The merchant took off like the wind. His uniform can be useful sometimes. But you scared him after death. That, too, was a particularly annoying kind. Hmm, well. Uh, ahem, uh, you haven't told me where exactly we're going. We're going to Five for information. We'll go to Five for information. Oh, to her. So you know where she is now? Mark that on the map. Five stays at one place from the two days to a couple of months. I was hoping she was still there where she had been last seen. Uh, she had been seen last time. Otherwise, we would have to spend a lot of time looking for her. I thought we should need... Uh, I thought we would need to visit two in, in her desert. She's the first suspect, isn't she? Humans, fairies, steins, effiates attack, absolutely everyone. Really? There's no steins were attacked to tell. Don't Mark and Linda told you. Not about that. Steins tried to cover it up, but the recon found out they had been attacked as well. If her people suffer, does it mean two isn't behind it? Anything is possible. Hm, I'll get it. Why would she allow that to happen? An error in two's new equation or some failed four's experiments. Doesn't matter which numerals behind the Effiot's appearance. Our task is to find a way to get rid of them and not to make assumptions. Right, right. While we were talking, stray, the square started bustling. Passers by were dropping whatever they were doing and uh, stopped and whispered to one another. The crowd started gathering. I assume that's a stein. Uh, anyways, I'm also, you know what, also I'm just gonna actually take this opportunity to, uh, wrong button. Like, I feel like we've seen quite a bit, and like I said, someone else is waiting for me now, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into this. So, yeah, like I said, down in the description you'll find a link to the Steam page, you can get the demo, play, the, play it in its entirety, and then wishlist if you wish to play, buy the game once it actually comes out. Bye-bye.